Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, innovating, and amazing propaganda cast with me, a host. Whoa. Pearl Dane, the one and only Master Propaganda here of Zyke Defender of the Fatherland, off you to 2v2. On Elf's outskirts, the North it is Mule and Farage Fun here for an American British Task Force USA 2nd Airborne, working together with the British 1st Armored Division. And a flanking maneuver around Monte Cassino in the South it is Bambone, and it is Flockle Fun here for the German Army, Deutschland. Here with the 44th Reichsgrenadier Division, Hochen Deutschmeister, trying to resist this Allied assault. So we got a 2-5 charge here for Bambone, we got an airdrop 30 count out of Mule, with Rifen on the way there, so that's definitely a start there. Flockle has not gone for much except Pioneers and Grandies, and Fergie has gone for a section, and no additional sap, so clearly going to focus on more infantry fast, which is definitely becoming more of a British meta thing. Gurney is setting out here as always. Big hearty thanks to my patron supporters for continued generous and absolutely heroic support with the propaganda cast. And a big thanks to those who keep commenting and liking my videos. Helps out immensely with the YouTube algorithms. So we are off to the races here. Steady approach here. Though it's worth noting here, we are seeing a flock of their folks in more in the center supporting here. Bambona keeping a closer sort of step rank there. There's a bit towards the north there. You can see that's also where Fergie is primarily focusing as well there. Third of sitting up here in the stream, ready to cover the southern fuel pond. Of course, flanks are exposed. We can actually see Bambona is King Man. There is a flank path here. Thumbs up. Pascal Court here is going to pop into the half track, then engage the third of Cal. Theoretically, a small chance of even scoring a white here if Mule here is too slow to react. But no, he's quick to, I think, realize here, of course, what's happening. And if it doesn't retreat now, it could, of course, be GG for that 30 cal. And it becomes a machining gear. Up north, we can see now Flockle is like moving to sort of deal with Fergie here. Which, of course, also means Bambona will be a bit more on his own. Fergie's, of course, brought in several sections now. Probably got more sections on the way. Maybe a Vickers. And he is charging at the sections. I think it's definitely a mistake here. And I think Flockle is kind of making it a bit worse, but then trying to withdraw in front of the sections, particularly more in the way. They get a lot of free shots and they can do a lot of damage. Cut off homing bit hit here. Flockle now a bit more extended here against the Allies' forces. Bambona, I think, is going to have to pick up the pace. And we get the light support company, Mule. Two raft cords could maybe drop another third of Cal in. May not. This one in conservation, in fact, we... The 30 cal actually, yeah. Oh, it's all the way back at base still. And we got another route one way for Mule. Hey, another route squad section out in the center. Here we got Flame Force pushing back. Of course, the Flame for upgrade for G's force compensation becomes much stronger here. Nice boost there, which of course is going to give Flockle a quite bit of discomfort. Jason has brought in MG 42s. Could have maybe pushed in here, but at the same time, I imagine Fergie's going to look to attack from more angles to make it a bit harder for the Grenadiers to make much of an impact. In the south, half to deal with the forces here under Mule pushing forwards here. 30 kills on the way, and we can just got yeah, Fergie bypassing everything to go for that fuel pond right outside the excess base. Bit risky in some respects, but at the same time, could have quite an effect on the German economy. So that could get very uncomfortable very fast. Few points there being traded up north and in the south. We got a Panzer Canadian squad kind of deep within enemy terrain, a bit surrounded here. Not without risks, but it could also draw in a lot of attention. We got Assault Grenadiers of Abavona. Pretty uncommon choice, I think. At least in the current meta game, we got Breakthrough there out of Flockle, as we got MP40 Grenadiers. Equipped them with the Machine and Pistol in Fiatic. Definitely going to be a bit of a boost to the firepower close range you see it for Flockle. Pioneer is taking the south and further south. The Rascal being pushed back by the Panzers and the half track troops there. And the assault gun is out. Finding on the fuel point as well there. And with the assault guns retreat path, theoretically there could be more effect to this section here, but no. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, you can see the gun is pushing further, but they're also getting focused on as Fair G has a lot of sections now on the field. So the Grenadiers can't really dive in that far without support. Bambona bringing in an ambulance, of course a good addition. And we got Mule with the infant support center. Not a big surprise there. There's definitely going to be a search in mech our support center. And because again, cancer shots are crazy good. But outside of that, it does tend to very much be dominated by infant support center. 
And over here to Flockle's perspective, who's got three grandiers and a mortar plus the officer's quarters. Versus G with four sections. The sapper's got the grenade upgrade on the way. Not a vast surprise there. We got the Granada Mephi team out there. It's going to provide the Grandiers, of course, with a bit more offensive support versus a dug in opponents. We'll make it harder for OG just to like, you know, rely on any potential machine guns and other such subject matters. German force trying to push forward. Got there, though. Mule firmly ensconced here by the Western victory point. And we can see there that Bombona is not quite keen on just pushing through that. There you go. Mortify going down here. Possibly a smoke screen. Nope, regular bombardment completely smashing the walls of that guard tower. Second wave of German troops going up, we're noting more MP40s possibly going up here. Oh, upgrades the flock, doesn't have munitions. In the center, soldiers catching the saps here with their MP40s. A lot of MP40s here, the Axis forces. Charging in further ahead here, British forces now caught in a bit more of the upset there. But in the south, you can see their mule is down to hit back against. Bombona. And he's clearly not too intimidated by that flamethrower pioneer squad in the half track anymore. Probably indicating he's got grenades, and that of course is going to force Bombona to be more careful. Got a half track out there, upgrading it with the anti tank half track upgrade. That's definitely the kind of thing by now. And we got the Panzer Company Company at four. Flockle. Pulling in some more. Heavy troop support the 44th. Entertaining half track running 40 through the wooded areas here. Going for that half track. He wants it gone. He wants it destroyed in the name of democracy. And there you go. Got the 250 half track there. A stinging blow there to Bombona. Can only stay at the scrap metal left burning before his very eyes. Pharaoh G with the Stuart Light Tank upgrade here. We got brand sections. The guard several sections also now being fairly low and healthy as Flockley keeps pushing ahead here with MP40 Grenadiers, though not so many other upgraded units. I would not be surprised to see some Panzer Grenadiers. And instead we got the 250 half track, a Sturmler, and to tank half to the hit with a half to pull out long. And going after it there. Rifleman cap moving in. We got the 250 here with the Panzer going to finish off the job here. And gets it. Better blow there to Mule. We do get a sticky bomb on the 250 after blowing out the engine. Even the Panzer is a bit stranded there in front of the enemy lines. And the assault ground is meeting the 30 cal there. Are very much also encouraged to withdraw towards the base. Panzer goes out there for Flockle. Giving him certainly some stronger offensive elements than the MP40 Grenadiers half track Caputi. 250 half track there, being upgraded to the Sturmel. Thumbs up to that, and we got here airdrops out of Mule and the 82nd Airborne, second paratrooper company. Punts Puny in a bit of a tough spot. Cut upon what's being threatened here, and we can see Mule is a bit all over the place. Not easy, not mean Mule, but the uh, Bambone is a bit of a broke down there. Pan our pioneers besieged by the Vickers. Sturmel slowly trying to assist. We got a wave of German forces there out of Flockel. And we got a fight for the card of as well there. A lot of hectic action here. And we got Farad. You can see also bring up the M3 a one Stuart light tank. It could later be upgraded to the M5 a one Stuart light tank, which I think was also the only real case of where a tank was actually upgraded to receive sloped armor. Don't recall any other case where that really happened, so little fun note there. We've got Glenys pushing forwards here. Flock quick looking to exploit the gaps there in Brody's lines. He's also been shifting towards the center. But we do have the sword light tank out there. Where the hell did they come from? The South here, flak feeling half tracks have been brought forth by Bambona. We got the officers' quarters here for the Panzer Gunner Company out of Flockel. So good. And he is there, close to half health. And we got Ferry Vehicles bringing more Bren guns to the front line. And we got training as well, They're obviously a very good in, very good combination, also very, very common. Go for all sections, equip the Bren guns, get the training. And just start shooting all over the place. So 
So that's kind of definitely makes Fergie's troops very uncomfortable to deal with. Half track out there for Mule again. Another M3 half track back to Bambona and over to Mule as well. I would be expecting to get that coming into tank half track. So we could use it for regular purposes. Maybe an ambulance. It is the anti tank half track. Not a big surprise, but again, certainly highlights that. This has definitely become more of an actual thing in the meta game. But there you go. Nice flank here by Mule. Getting behind Flocker there. Good chance to maybe a wipe here, but no. Looks like Flocker's luck there holds out. Really close call though. We got the Stuart there, of course, providing some support alongside the sections, but they, some of them are not having too great of a time there in the guard post. Going for the tank commander upgrade, which of course further boosts infantry around it, of course, meaning Farage's brand Saxon become even more lethal. Back in the south, mines being laid down. We got machine gun positions up here for Bambona. Of course, we got the flat filling trying to shoot down some of those allied aircraft, but supply drops cannot be shot down. Fire up north here, Sturm finding out as the Brent section stood moving in here. Could see here, Flock will punish for extending his light vehicle against the British. We do have a still light tank here. No, perhaps not. Oh, blinding shot, but it missed. I actually hit the other unit. I didn't even know that was possible. Almost had it here. Oh, he does get it. Sting blood there to Flockle. Further south here, Bambona's positions are being pressured. You can see the mule is looking to flank around a hit from the south as well as here. I think that's a pretty solid tactic as long as it is you know, well executed and well supported. Stuffing up in front of the machine gun is definitely not so much that. We got the flak to bring in, so already here, Mule, having lost some of the speed here to the attack, is already being, you know, slowly fixed here and pushed into the dirt once more. If you with that flak feeling half track, I think pretty swiftly. Guessing Mule is perhaps planning here a e carbon bombing of North E. Further finding from the northern fuel point, packs being sent in on their own, pretty risky. The Ponson aircraft they're going in. So much action all over the place here. And they got the anti-tank half track bombarding the flag feeling. That's definitely one way of trying to do it. Seems like at least for now, Bombona has managed to stall Mule's advance into the forest here. And we got the Panzer commander for Bombona. Bring in something a bit heavier. He's also going for armored supports that will likely mean loiters out of him. And there you go, triple cap from the axes on the allies. Black feeling business shooting the reconnaissance aircraft. And down it goes. Meanwhile, Frog G still trying to engage and push out the Germans. Some flanking attempts here could definitely catch here. Flocking on a bit of crossfire. Brand gunners moving up, of course, with training. They are quite nasty. Never mind the Stuart. Panzer is getting focused on pretty hard. Then he is getting mauled. Scouts advancing on to be met with heavy machine gun fire there. Battle continues to tie back and forth. Neither side are really gaining any sort of like notable long term territorial advantage, it feels like. But now it does appear like the Germans do have a bit the edge here, but even that could very rapidly change. Mule, they're definitely a bit short on fuel, probably could spend it all on upgrades. And the pinch course, you can call in into tank and then paratroopers if it's over the size. We've got the Panzer Theater for Bambona. Bringing in more assistance from the 90th Panzer gun, need to be shown. Further south here, right from the machine guns in trouble with the German machine guns. But we got him, Mule, looking for a big flank here. Rushing in the rifle engineers. 
back to a triple cap here. Allies being bled out now quite aggressively by the Germans. Basenreich. Of course, got that flag from still being brought it. Jorgen, we need to get out of here before the, those, the downtown we can and blast us to bits. Mines being laid down here. We got the half tracks sort of bombarding still, just randomly having to get lucky. We got the ambulance there, probably feeling mighty uncomfortable. Fritz, you need to be ready to step on it. You know how those Americans get around ambulances? I do. I mean, haven't you heard the stories about the Americans? Nine? Good. Just trust me, it's not good stories. Pushing in a bit of trouble here. Vravko could get wiped out. Mule there. Going for a pretty broad assault, but looks like he lost a bit of control here of it. This can have cost him a bit there. Ravko hits a mine, goes down in the name of democracy and liberty. Captain may also get a possible information there to Major. There was one to be promoted, but just not that way. Center there, Fergie, and the British forces are advancing in the name of fish and chips. Further up north here, Flockle is finding his front line once more crumbling like a cake in an earthquake zone. And back here to Flockle and to Ferigi. We got the company command post on the way there. We got Blitzkrieg. So Flockle definitely aiming for a Tiger here. We just even got the fuel there built up and the man post sort of there. Of course, bit risky to do it like this, but clearly Flockle does not give a toss. Ergi, meanwhile, no battle group. Guessing he's a bit on the reactive side, perhaps trying to figure out what his opponent's up to. I mean, it could very well just keep him for some open in case, like, he wants the archer to deal with a potential tiger tank. Or, you know, Black Prince or Airloiters, we'll have to see. There's certainly noteworthy there. Out of Fergie. Got the Bren guns there, but out in the open, they are somewhat easy target, particularly with the mortar there. And we actually got the mule going for bazooka teams now. Interesting. No sign of any tech for him, though. Of course, for G he has to come to command post up. Could go for foot guards, but at this point, most players just seem quite content with Bren sections and rarely bother with the foot guards nowadays. So, I'm guessing though it's going to be Mason and Matilda, a Crusader, but otherwise it's like just push for grants. Very dealing more claim to Northern up there. Go Flock, although gets a bit of engines there, cutting down one of the sections in cold blood. Not be the assault gun is flash out the rifleman. Probably better just trying to breach in a sense, but then again, with the building rate to collapse. I think it was probably the smarter there not to do it. Jorgen, we need to get into the building. Have you seen the structural capacity on this thing? It's terrible. It's going to explode any time on our heads. We should not enter that building no matter what. Yeah, yeah. My God. You don't have to be so pedantic about these things. There you go. Panther 3 getting slammed here by heavy anti-tank fire there out of 3rd and the first armor division. We got Basil the Kitty. Basling about there in the background. Got 307 to 230. The German Engineers army still has the lead. And Farrah Gieson going to be a bit out of the equation for a while with three of his sections in a very poor condition. Fresh counter attack here. Flockle inching ever closer to the Tiger. He's about two command points away. And fuel wise, he's definitely there. there. Manpower wise, he's not too far of either. So that's definitely like a pure just Tiger stall strategy here out of him. But it's kind of being helped out by the fact, you know, RDS Moon looks like leverage that much pressure against him either. It's like really falls a heavy response. He's going then for Churchill Tank himself. Meaning he is not going to like have like an easy like you know response to the Tiger tank though of course fun fact the first Tiger tank knocked out on the Western Front was actually knocked out by Churchill tank so you know you didn't know that one she had it here in the previously but I'll wait Churchill tank on the way there 
Reichman advancing. Now yeah, go quick artillery fire there. Center could look to be a weak spot. I could have spotted by Fergie here. We got designate targets. We got raiding it's like it. Churchill tank is almost ready here. Then use the two brand sections. Not a great spot to be in there. Go the Pantherfees ramming could turn the tide. The Flockle still betting everything on the T gun. We got Aerocons out of Mule. The Suga team's prowling through here, out looking to like you know exploit any gaps there. The south side though is kind of wide open. I feel like Mule could do a bit of good by sneaking up forces there. Not be so good, Bambona. Back to Bambona though, and back to Mule. Who's now going for snipers as well there. Morton trouble the Bren section. Ram has the Panzer Puny and the MD34. The Alts do have the rocket strike and not the carpet bombing. Mildly surprised that, but not wildly either. Bren section, they've got trouble got there. Quick exploited push here, but we want to try and get that wipe in. Churchill tank though is on the field there, waiting for everything like a massive land ship. And there goes Stupening up from the two Panther threes, probably trying to buy some time for the retreating section. As for Mule, we are not seeing much tech, just that one half tech and a mix of support elements there. Could at least maybe consider another half tech. Umborna, meanwhile, is steadily getting closer to possible Loiter himself. Churchill tank there, looking to probably get out of trouble here. We got Gunnadies pursuing it with Panther Faust. Panther's in a bit of trouble as well there. And there you go, Churchill tank finding its engine blown out. Finding continues to be rather spread out there. Friends actually flanking through a ditch there. Catching here, some of Flocker's forces in a bit of a compromising position. And if he's going up here and getting the rap squad, we've got veteran gunners. And we got mines exploding in the feet of the retreating grenadiers, causing quite a bit of harm, a bit of grief. And there you go, grenade package from you. There the expanding the arsenal of democracy in their sector of the battlefield rather than getting absolutely pummeled punts of puny moving in machine gun withdrawing a bit here north you mean a bit of a horde move there of course increases maximizes damage into like one point but if there's a counter about that could get very painful very quickly you'll find them with a tank depth on the way there thumbs up And Flockle there, of course, you're still biding his time for that Tiger tank. I imagine, though, it's not that far off by this point. In the West here, Bambona and Mule still at it. Charging with the assault gun is actually too. I would say what Bambon is up to, maybe he's also scheming for a Tiger tank. Wouldn't be surprised. And there we go. Almost had the 30 cal there. Mule though was narrowly able to salvage it from becoming a machine and give there. We got the Churchill tank mostly in working order. Can't attack into Flockless positions here. This is men are getting absolutely decimated. The fire, high explosives, and the occasional Sten gun. In the south of Victory Point Forge, the German Reich here as the 44th Reichsgrenadier Division claims the Victory Point in the name of Das Vaterland. We got the armored reserves to select from Bambona. So yeah, that's definitely something planned out. And we got the Tiger tank here out for Flockel. The Tiger has arrived from the 504th Schwerer Panzer Abteilung. Second Schwerer Panzer Company. Elster Schwerer Panzer Zug. Coming out with that heavy armor there. Where to, sir? Well, 
A lot of troops they're holding up here at Fort Mule. We also, of course, got a pit setting up. That's going to be a mortar pit without a doubt. We got 257 versus 145. Germans still have the lead here. Allies, they're doing their best to try to sort of close it, but they're not doing that with great success for the time being. We got Mule Sniper already back 21. With this. I believe scope Lee Enfield. I do know they also have the scope version of the M1 Garand, but I don't think they used that one for snipers. Well, again, they didn't, re they didn't really have snipers, they had marksmen, but they didn't actually train snipers, they used army. I might say in the British, the Germans, the Soviets, and I think even the Italians, but the Americans never trained snipers. So, yeah. Little fun fact there. Bazooka team ring about here. Flag half track. Oh, caught here with the Bazooka team's a full volley there. And knocked out the interesting half. We got Panzer the Dubbing going for that sniper. Van Bonner wants that sniper. Todd over to Flockle, by the way. Gets the sniper. Over to Ferry G as well there. His front line here, of course, now under the immediate stress of the Tiger. And we got here just Van Bonner unleashing all hell here on. Mule, another church of tanks on the way. Six pounder gun slamming where the T clearing up one crew there with a single shot. Then he's advancing ace level there. Hardened veterans, and we got smoke and incendiary bombing runs. They're ready for Flockle. That's a chaos. But with the Tiger tank here and some of the losses they've suffered for the Allies, the Germans definitely have a bit of an edge them to also factor in the victory points. We do get a rocket run in the Tiger though. Oh, and gets it! Got it with a rocket run! Flockle too slow there, seizes Tiger tank! Getting the Save It Private Ryan treatment! A stinging blow to the morale of the German Reich. And with that, the Allies could seize the initiative, charge forwards, putting over the extra fancy tea kettles. Getting out the extra fancy biscuits. Panda Fee's now trying to halt an Allied surge here for the center. Bazooka team still being expected to lead it, on not having great time with it. Panda Force bring in the reserves here for Bombona as he tries to maintain control of the center, but the Allies are doing their best to break through. The assault just keep charging in, they're right in front of the Churchill tanks. Definitely a bit ambitious there, Pantafees on the flank here. Hellcats out, 6 pun and crew though, expiring, artillery fire draining down, death. Pat Gunners moved here with that Churchill tank, got a second though, diving in. And we got... Oh, something going on there, I think that was a lot... No, that was smoke? I think? Yeah. Maybe in the Cinnabon mile as well, there's definitely a lot there happening all the way. Germs in the center, they're having a bit of a rough time. Packs of continue to be brought up here. And we got here. Van Bonen withdrawing most of his armor for current repairs. Rav's got in trouble here trying to get to that southern victory point. And northern one. We got Flocker there with a full assault force. Harden MP40 Grandiers, Panzer Grandiers, all striking in the name of Das Reich. 241 for 72. The Hellcat swing in for a bit of a peek at the Panzer 3s. Maybe the Panzer 4 as well. Machine crew there, decimated, devastated. Churchill tanks keep at it here, the mighty guns blasting the pack crews. Got one pack crew there, exterminated. And wrecking the other one there, Flock will continue to suffer some uh, rather painful losses. I'm guessing that he's just going to save up for another one. There you go, Panda 3 and Panda 4 to the rescue, Churchill tank then, woo. Going for that pack as well. Sector gone. We must take it back. Panzig is in a better tough spot. And quick to work up fixing that Churchill tank. The assault is charging in puckers as well. Mules forces. Most of the comprised bazooka teams will struggle to halt the assault troops. Second German wave there. Got triple Panzer Gunners now for local. 
quite a few Panzer Grenadiers, quite a few Sturmgewehrs. And they're going into a bombing to further undermine Fergie's heroic British defense. There we go. Incinerating that Vickers crew there. Grenades exploding, and the South here, Panther 3, Panther 4 moving in. Hellcats to the rescue, they're trying to halt here the German arm and assault. Nice flank there. North side is kind of forgotten by Ferry is getting too sewn in on the center, which Flockler I think is more than happy to exploit. The South here could be a chance here for Mule to deliver some heavy blows there to Bambona. Those two Hellcats. Almost got those Panzer Grenadiers. And another flak filling that up on Fixing all those panzers. Bit of air stuff there as well out of Flockle. Smoke this around to cover the advance in the center. Thumbs up. I really feel like it's been ages since I've seen anyone like use the smoke bombs. Mega grenade assault. The steel hunt granata. And the south, another wave of assault troops here out of Bambona as he strikes into the forest again. Could have like tried to launch a flanking assault here to at least open up a secondary front against Mule, but he commits almost fully to head on assault here against the reasonably well prepared Americans there. The Sony some more 30 cals could provide a bit more backbone for such a defense. North side, they almost had it there, but they ultimately ground down there. Ferry G continues to obsess over the center of the map, conceding the north side to those. German vermin. And we got a third Hellcat out for Mule, really focusing hard on the armor. Probably also the concern of another Tiger tank, like here out of Flockle. Though whether or not that survives longer than the previous one is, of course, another matter entirely. And the South Mule again trying to breach. Uh, Bambon trying to breach Mule's defenses head on. And there go another structure strafe, and again almost had it here. Combining it with that whole mark designate targets for increased chance of knocking it out there. Ferrigi once more sends in the Churchills, and he gets it. That is Flockle's second Tiger tank. Utterly kaput. And his pants now hitting a mine in front of Sappers with Churchills behind them. Flockle is getting crushed here. You do get it. What appears to be an incendiary bombardment here. I don't think it's going to be sufficient here. And certainly won't stop the Churchill tanks. There you go. 30 cows at least incinerated. Sappers also having a pretty hot retreat. And they get wiped. That's certainly going to help a bit. Meanwhile, in the south here, it's not up all to Bambona, I think. As far as he moves in as well against him. And for this scores a Hellcat knockout there. Churchill's keeping on here. Pantherfee's blazing their guns at the lumbering warships. Got 50 points left for the Allies. They need to get something done there soon. Almost got a Pantherfee and Kaput. The Ar Axis armored losses are steadily piling up now. And Ambulance, of course, just panicking in front of the American tank destroyers. Second Panda Fee, though, kaput as well. Axis armored losses are starting to really get out of control here. Flak filling crew just pops a smoke grenade and gets the devil out of there. Panda 4 cut off. We got Assault Gun is fighting for that northern victory point. Defending it and actually cutting down several other units. Ferry losing a brand section in the process. Panda 4 going for it. Terrified. We could see the Panda 4 either get knocked out without a chance to do much here. And down it goes. With that, but bonus lost every Panda 4, but now he has a Tiger tank. 
Will that one survive better than Bumbo? Or oh, Flockle just panned Tiger Tanks. Who knows? Flockle though has next to nothing left. Just some Grenadiers and Panzer Grenadiers. Everything else has expired. Oh, the Pharaoh G, who's certainly looking a bit rough around the edges, but does crucially have two tanks. So, will Flockle just bet on another Tiger Tank? I mean, I'd not be surprised. And there you go, running off with the Vickers. A bold high step of Flockle, but certainly one that is necessary under current circumstances. 31 points left for Sunday 79 here. Reports of enemy movement near our victory point. I'm born in their force withdraw. And there you go, Tiger Tank rolling ahead here. Lumbering war machine there. They've taken our victory point. Certainly, I imagine adding to the Allies' stress at the moment. Since of course if Flockle gets another Tiger Tank up, which he absolutely will, that's going to be two Tiger Tanks in the field. Which will certainly be a bit tough for them to just deal with a single individual Tiger. So far, I mean, at least, they've dealt with Flockles fairly easily, but from Bambona, who might just handle this Tiger a bit better, and Odds might be a lot less clear there now than for the ounce. Could you smoke any but Flockle? Bar right from there, expiring in the face of a fine. There goes Seth, was just gone. Good lord! Nigel! Nigel! Who's Nigel? I don't know. I just. I, I, I felt like he needed to go in a more dramatic manner. It just exploded! Exactly! And there you go. Rocket strike there. They're going for it again, but this time, though. Smart move here, calls this. He actually angles it away from the arc of attack there. The actual angle of attack there. Very good there by Bambona. Flock looking to go for Tiger Tanks. Well, Hellcats, they keep diving at it. Looks like we are going to see another Tiger Tank kaput. Flock has yet to call in his. That's a third Tiger Tank down. That's a. I believe the Heavy Tiger Platoon. They were typically organized into platoons of three. Not the more like, you know, late platoons of five or medium tanks. Even that would change towards the mid to late stages of the war from four to three as well. Flock is still yet to go for his. Maybe he's just shocked and like wondering. Maybe Tiger tanks are a bit too vulnerable. Who knows? But they're under 17 points here. Six pound crew there seem to have gone. Flock is just. Is he paralyzed? Okay, there you go. Seems like he was a bit of key then woke up again. That's the third Tiger Tank out of Flockle, fourth Tiger Tank total. They've captured a victory point. Got that because hard at work. We got 163 versus 17. We got Ferry G with fresh Churchill tanks on the way there, mules, Hellcats. Uh are definitely one of them looking very closely joining up in hell there. Smoke again here. Thumbs up to Flockle. I mean, he's very much in point with these smoke bombs. It is fairly impressive. Gotta give credit there. Less so to his handling of the Tiger tanks. I mean, you can already imagine, like, High Command just looking at all the Tiger Lots going, What the hell are these guys doing? Do they think this in the outcomes can just turn these out into millions? Southside going for the point. Panthers going to be charging. We got a machine there supporting a beleaguered rifle squad there. In the center though, it's a slaughter there. Troops are dying. Tiger tanks got King Glass in there. Go Hellcats going for the flank here. Nice move there. Bit risky due to one Hellcat. But they've run out of victory points. So despite it, many others have been winning. The Germans have just sneak out a win there. Just very narrowly. A GG game over. GG game. Had they been a bit, think a bit sharper than victory points, they'd probably been in a much better position by now. But those victory points proved crucial, despite Flockel again just throwing away Tiger tanks like they're Shermans or T-34s. <laughs> so there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. You'll learn something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment. This is Imperial Links and cheers. And see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye, everyone.